All right. Are you trying to add data into a new fabric warehouse? Well, you're in the right place. I'm going to show you soup to nuts, how you add, you know, you create the warehouse, you add data in the whole thing. We're going to go through that right now. All right. Uh, welcome to Chris B. I'm my name's Chris Wagner. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff that really helps feed the logarithm. Let's get into it. Okay, so uh, I am in my brand new uh, Kratos BI workspace. Uh, I've got this created. So you can see I've got no, nothing is already in here, right? It's just a, a blank workspace. So I'm going to go to new item and I'm going to type in my warehouse because that's what I'm creating is a warehouse. And I'm just going to ask for a name. I'm going to give it my name. It's uh, Kratos BI warehouse. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and click on create. And right here, you're gonna see like the warehouse is gonna entirely spin up uh, right inside the session. So you can see how how long it takes for it to come together, okay? So uh, when the warehouse gets created, you're gonna get two things. One, one, a warehouse that you can uh, build and add data into, and two, a semantic model that you can build reports off of that's directly connected to what's inside the warehouse. And just like boot that, boom, I've got all my data together. Now, the easiest and best way to get data into the data warehouse is through a, uh, a Dataflow Gen 2. And we could see that uh, there's a, a little button in the upper corner here that says Get Data. All right. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to select that. And the first item in there is a new Dataflow Gen 2. Now, I really like doing this from within the warehouse because it makes my life entirely really simple when I'm adding data into this. Okay. Now, first thing it's going to ask, like, where am I going to get data from? Is it Excel, SQL, uh, CSV, or from a data flow? I can click on import from SQL server, which is right in the center here, or I can go to get data and I can find all the items that are out there. For the purposes of this, though, I'm pulling from a on-prem SQL server. So I'm going to put in the uh, server name. It's a uh, local host in my instance, and it's AdventureWorks DW 2019. Now, please note, case sensitivity is important. So if I had uh, the, the cases wrong here at all, it would not automatically connect to my gateway that I've got set up. So I've got those set up, so it automatically connected to my gateway. I'm good to go. I'm going to say next. It's going to then connect to the data source. You can see that's spinning right here. And uh, when it connects, I'm going to get this whole long list of uh, tables and views that are available for me. I'm going to be loaded. This is going to be my reseller's uh, warehouse. I'm going to be getting stuff from. So I'm going to say I want data from Dim Reseller and I want it from uh, the Fact Reseller Sales. So these two tables are what I'm going to be loading for this demo. Okay. So once that's done. Uh, there's a little button right behind me that says great. I'm going to click on that and it's going to create my, my data flows. First, it's going to run through validate the data that's coming in from dim reseller and factory seller. So this is, this looks good. Uh, I want to go up here. I don't want to rename this. This is going to be my reseller data flow. I'll show, let me zoom in so you can see where I'm doing that rename. It's in the upper corner here, right? So I just clicked on the item and renamed it and I hit enter. And now I've got a new name for my data flow. Okay. Now, uh, again, uh, there's a little, uh, there's some icons. Oops. Let me go over this. Okay. In this lower corner here, two things I want you to focus in on. Number one, it's that destination, okay? When you create data flow, you have to choose where you're going to load that information into. Well, because I started my data flow from inside of the warehouse, it automatically is mapping all the data into my warehouse. So this is all set up for me. I don't have to do anything else with it, okay? And then all, all I'm going to do then is I'm going to click on the publish button to publish just the code out into the service, okay? So I'm going to click on publish and it's going to start to load up now as we can see 
we've got a spinning dial that, that's spinning right up over here, okay? So this guy is gonna keep spinning until the code is deployed all out into the service. Now, the code is not just like the, uh, it's not the data, right? So I wanna make sure once that's get done, um, uh, uh, deploying the code, and I'm going to see a pop up. It's going to show up in the upper right hand corner when it gets done. See, there it goes. Data flow reseller published successfully. It is going to automatically kick off the refresh. This is a brand new feature that's uh, to Data Flows Gen 2. You used to always have to make sure you hit refresh. It's going to do that automatically for you, which, hey, that is pretty awesome uh, because I need data in my tables to do the next steps. But one thing that's missing though, look at that. We are NA, we do not have a next refresh scheduled. So I wanna make sure I go in and schedule that. That's available inside of the settings uh, that's available on that prompt or the, the ellipses here, you click on settings and uh, I could just go into the settings on this data flow and I could choose when I'm gonna refresh this. Now I'm in the central time zone so I'm going to go up, I'm going to choose Central Time USA, and I want to configure that that refresh. Now, a couple options, daily or weekly. In this case, I'm going to say daily, and I want to refresh my data every day at 5 a.m. I want to pull this information. So I'm going to say, okay. I could choose, uh, so right now it, it's updating me because I'm the only data owner in my uh, demo environment, um, or... Uh, I could send emails to uh, some other people. So Luchador, uh, I, I could also send data to the Power BI Luchador or a notification when it fails. So he would get, he would know like, okay, hey, this failed. Okay. I'm going to click on apply. And now when I go back to my, uh, uh, when I go back to my workspace, I could see that I've got a next refresh and it's tomorrow at, uh, 5 a.m. This is going to run and operate. Okay. So now I've brought, I, I've defined my loads. I've loaded it. I've scheduled it. Let's go take a look at the data. So when I go into my warehouse, I can drill into my DBO and I can drill into my tables and I can see, uh, I can see I've got my, ah, come on, IntelliSense. Ah. I can see I've got my dim reseller sales and my fact sales there. Just by clicking on them, I can go check out the data is in them. Boom, it's available on both of these. Um, so this is all good to go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go check out the model layout for this. Okay. Now, model layout's important because it it's what you're going to be building your reports off of. And, you know, it's basically, it's your automatically generated semantic model with direct connections to this data. Okay. Now, uh, I am going to hit refresh on this screen because for whatever reason, uh, the semantic model just needs a little refresh, a little prodding, as you can see there before all the tables show up. But no edits, no cuts, no fuss, no muss. Uh, it's now available in here. I'm going to do a couple things. Uh, I'm going to hide the tables that uh, I, I'm not super interested in, like uh, your know, execution requests. I'm going to hide that and dump that. Session history, I'm going to hide that and, and move that to the side. I'm going to bring over my factory seller sales. And I'm going to find my other model items that I don't care about. I'm going to hide those guys because, you know, inside my semantic model, these are things that are just not super important for me, okay? But I am going to do, with the two tables I care about my semantic model, I'm going to do a couple things. Number one, I'm going to make sure I've got my reseller key here and my reseller key in my fact table. Now, I'm going to create the join. When you create the join, always drag from the fact table, the many, to the dimension table, the one. So, I, you know, where there's many records in the fact table and there's one record in the dimension table, that's the uh, drag direction I'm going to go. So I'm gonna go from reseller key in the fact table to reseller key in the dimension. I'm gonna get popped up this like new relationship prompt. It's gonna say, okay, from fact reseller sales and I can kind of scroll over. I can see the reseller key and I could scroll over and I could see, yes, I've got these set up right. I've got the cardinality as many to one and single direction. Now, 
here's a big thing on performance. You can look at like learning more. If you have referential integrity in, in place, and I know my data maintains that, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna make that selection mark there. Okay. And then I'm gonna click on save. Now I have created uh, my report model. I've got this all set up so I can uh, manage my loads every single day. And I've got my model so I can build reports off of this without any issues. All right. I think that's pretty cool. We would soup to nuts from bring, you know, like the creation of the warehouse, loading it, uh, you know, curating it, you know, making your model accessible. This has got everything that you, uh, you know, that you got available for you. So uh, I think this should have it all right. So if you're, if you have questions, leave those down below uh, in the comments. I try to answer questions as best I can. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff, right? Like share it with your friends and family. Like turn it on for your dog. Like I got playlists. Like play, do the playlisting for your dog. The more people watch, view content, uh, the more success we got. And oh my gosh, if you really want to support the channel, we got our first like little partnership here. Uh, we are partners with hex clad uh these are literally the best pans on the planet you know gordon ramsay loves them as their uh uh but they're guaranteed for life uh you know if you're looking for healthy living and like some of the best pans in the world you should check it out um affiliate links are down below someplace i don't know where they are exactly but they're down below you should check it out all right uh with that thank you guys so very much you guys have the best day ever all right